In this video, we're gonna explore Google My Business, its features, and how small businesses can utilize it. In this video, I chat extensively about Google My Business with Jasmine Holmes. Jasmine owns a marketing agency in Phoenix, Arizona, and I met her about a year ago at a marketing workshop and the topic of Google My Business came up amongst the audience. And all of a sudden, this woman in the back started chiming in and answering the questions. And before we knew it, the entire audience was focusing on her and she was answering all their questions about Google My Business. So I knew that I had to meet and have a conversation with her. That person is Jasmine Holmes. And she works specifically with local small businesses in the Phoenix area. And she's got a very strong pulse on local SEO and more importantly, everything related to Google My Business. So I knew when it comes to the topic of Google My Business, I had to speak with her. I'm Michael Quinn and this channel is dedicated to small businesses, entrepreneurs and marketers looking for simple and easy to understand search engine marketing tips. At the end of this video, if you've liked what you've seen, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. My guest today is Jasmine Holmes. Jasmine is gonna to talk to us about Google My Business. But before she does that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your business? Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, so my name is Jasmine Holmes. My company is 910 West, and we are located um, outside Phoenix, Arizona, so um, here in the Southwest desert. Um, I have been in business. I've had my own company now. For, it'll be 13 years in just a couple months. Um, but prior to that, so I've been in marketing for almost 20 years, and I it still boggles my mind when I think that I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't feel that old, but I guess that's how we all feel at this age, right? And that's how, that's one of the bylines in my biography that when I have somebody read is I am much older than I look, so don't be fooled <laughs> by that. And I'm very happy to say be able to say that. Um, so I started out, I went to school for graphic design, and that's what I did early on in my career in marketing. Um, I worked at a small company initially doing web design in 1999, 2000, so it was really different then. Um, and really wasn't sure about the web space because with graphic design, it's a little bit challenging. So eventually was hired by a company that was bought by Texas Instruments. And so I got to try out corporate uh, marketing and doing graphic design for a company like Texas Instruments. So doing product catalogs and press releases and advertisements. So pretty much anything print because again, it's early 2000. So really not doing their, you know, web and digital marketing just wasn't what it was today. Um, that the corporate experience really didn't work out well for me. Just wasn't my cup of tea. Um, thought in fact that marketing wasn't my thing. So I ended up um, getting hired by Apple to be a Mac genius. I opened the store in Tucson, moved to Phoenix, um, was promoted to lead Mac genius and was fixing people's computers, learned a ton about customer service. And so even though it was a little bit of a detour, like in terms of skill career wise, like what I picked up in customer service really was foundational for when I did um, decide to start my company because it taught me a lot about how to, as we used to say in the office, it was surprise and delight. And, and so that's something I brought with mm -hmm. me and my customers. And I'm, I'm a big believer in like every little experience of your life sort of adds up and educates you for the next thing. And so I feel like that was a really great sort of sideline for me, but did eventually come back to marketing. I'd always done freelance work, particularly websites, because that's been, you know, a growing need and a lot of smaller companies like, hey, do you know anybody? Sure, I'll do that for you in my spare time. Um, I had a friend who bought a salon is like, come do my website for me. And I thought, well, seems like I could maybe do this, you know, all the time. And so uh, left Apple when the iPhone came out, because I was like, I can't do this. Like I'm out, like too much tech support. <laughs> like I'm not ready for this. Left and went full time in, in the business. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Uh, initially kind of started out myself as a freelancer, but have since grown. And we've got a small team that work with us here now. And we've got, you know, a client base of about 25 to 30 active clients we're working with. So really just rocking and rolling, focused on, um, local community businesses. Community is super important to me. I'm very involved in my local community, but just community in general and the role that small business plays in the community, how much dollars they put back in and all the benefits they bring. That's something that I'm very passionate about having grown up in a small business. 
And so that's one of the reasons that that's really, um, you know, the core bread and butter of the type of companies we work with, because I love to be able to see how, when I support them to be successful, how they then put that back in the community. And so it's sort of, you know, by two degrees of separation, really strengthening communities all across the U.S. So you are specializing with local businesses. Tell me what all that uh, particularly entails. Sure, absolutely. So um, one of the things, um, when I first started the business um, and was focused really heavily on websites, but it was clear to me very, and graphic design, it was clear to me very early on. Um, and this was, we're talking, this was like 2005. So there was a lot going on in the economy then, you know, we're in a recession. But on top of that, outsourcing, particularly on the design side, was big at the time. Um, and people were like, hey, it's so much cheaper. We're going to send it over to India. Um, and so it became really clear to me that that wasn't going to be sort of a sustainable way to build the business or not necessarily a field I wanted to play in right at the minute. So I got very interested in SEO. And through um, John Jansen, the duct tape marketing network was introduced to the concept of local SEO, which to me, because I was working with a lot of smaller businesses was just like, cause SEO itself was such a big thing. And like, they don't need to be found for, you know, all across the U S it's really about, you know, business in your backyard. And so to me, it just kind of clicked like, Hey, this is something that the businesses that I'm talking to all the time need, it's a perfect fit. And I've built my entire business really around that. Our packages are built around working with those types of businesses and really offering the services they need from the digital perspective to get found online. And so, um, you know, that's around websites and there's the local SEO and the Google My Business, which is what we're going to talk about today, which is, you know, as always that pendulum shifting and, and things are changing in importance as well. Well, that leads right into the subject that we're going to talk about today, which is Google My Business. So why don't you tell our audience, what is Google My Business and how does it benefit them and their business and their Absolutely. local SEO? Absolutely. So Google My Business or GMB for short, if you're talking to a pro, because you'll hear us throw our acronyms around. Um, it's gone by many names in the past, and so that's one of the really confusing things about it is because it sounds like you may have not heard of it before, or if you have, you're like, oh, is that something new Google's doing? No, it's not. You may have heard it referred to as Google Maps um, or the failed experiment of Google+, Plus, which when you had the Google Plus for business, it was a piece of that. Google Places, it's absorbed a piece of that as well. And really what it is is that business directory piece of Google. And so where you see that most often is if you use Google Maps either on your computer or on, um, a lot of us use it on our phone either to get directions, but also to even find businesses. Sometimes we're out and about, I'm hungry, you know, what restaurants are near me. Um, so that Google Maps element is the really strong element, but the Google My Business encompasses maps and some uh, several other elements in there, and they've kind of rolled that all together, and that's what we're calling it for right now anyway. Who knows if that'll change. And why that's really important for small business is because one of the things Google are actually all business, but particularly small business. One of the things Google has very aggressively been um, doing over the last, and I would say about two years or so, is moving towards this um, first page of Google kind of results. And um, in local U Advance, you'll hear them talk about it in some of our professional organizations. They talk about it as the page one experience or the Google brand search experience. And what that's really about is Google wants as much as possible because they their primary revenue sources making money on ads. So they want to keep you on Google owned properties so they can show you advertising and make money on that. So it does, it's not in their interest to send them off to a website or somewhere else. And so they've been making a lot of changes to all of their products, but specifically in this Google My Business Arena, and part of that was the name change to um, put more information into that. And when we're talking about that, you may have seen it's that on the right hand side of the screen, if you Google your business name, and your city you're in, you'll see that it's, it used to be called the knowledge graph or knowledge panel that shows up on the right hand side that's about your business. Um, that's part of your Google My Business profile and they're try, they've added more and more information in there that you can now display, which we're gonna talk a little bit later about specifically what that is and what that looks like. But they really want people to be able to make an appointment directly from there, make that phone call so they stay on Google versus clicking over to a website and whether it's your website or even some of the other directories which we're now kind of seeing closing up and folding away because Google's trying to keep that in their search results. And so through that, 
um, Google My Business profile. It also has to do with when you're doing a search for, let's say, not so much a brand search for a business, but for a type of business. I'm looking for a restaurant, I'm looking for a dry cleaner, I'm looking for a dentist, any of those things in those what we call the local search results, which will, which will show up right underneath the ads in the main part of the body. But usually before you see um, all the results for the websites, a lot of times it'll be what we call the local pack. It used to be a little stack with a map. Now they look like little cards, so that's all been kind of changing too. But that little section there, your Google My Business profile plays a really big piece in whether or not you show up there for that search. And so that's the other reason it's really important. So you're going to share your screen and talk to us about some of the kind of overview of uh, Google My Business and then um, I assume uh, some of the new things and kind of what Todd or what people might have questions about. Yep, absolutely. So Google My Business. And I help prioritize this because this is one of the things I see for smaller businesses and, and actually it's something we struggle with in our own business because we're servicing so many smaller businesses is as Google rolls out these new, um, either tweaking what's already available or rolling out new features, sometimes it's hard to find time to implement it. And so one of the things that I've done is kind of gone, is gone through and really prioritized the parts of your profile because it doesn't make sense to jump ahead to some of these more advanced techniques if you haven't gotten the more foundational stuff in place first. And so I think that's one thing that's really important in any small business marketing, particularly if you're doing it yourself, is to have that prioritized list. So you can have that sort of checklist to work through. Let me start here. And I know it might take me a couple months to get all the way through this, but I at least have a roadmap of where I'm going. And that's what we're going to go through right here is that, that roadmap. And so first and foremost, the most important thing is your basic business information. Um, if you have read anything on local SEO or directories or citations, you may have heard it or even talked to companies who do it. You may have heard them use the acronym NAP refer to it as NAP, which is, stands for name, address, phone, and really there's a W missing from there because it should be website as well. But that's your business information online, the core information about your business. So if you do have a location, particularly if people come to your location, you don't go to service them. The address and having a correct address, so if you've moved it all, is critical so that people can find you. I can't tell you the number of clients that will be like, oh, I had somebody show up at some place I used to be two years ago, and then we mm. go out and find that address in a couple places. And that's really frustrating to customers, potentially, uh, specifically potential new customers, right? Because now here I've gone to try this business and I show up and you're not even there. Yeah. So that name, address, phone number, um, we used to spend a lot of time sort of outside of Google, my business, uh, cleaning that up in other directories. And a lot of that's really kind of shifted. Um, and the, Google's changed the way they gather information now. So it's a lot less critical worrying about all those other websites. But you absolutely, and you want to use Google as your kind of single source of truth there. So however you have it listed there, you want to make sure that's how you're doing it on the other websites. We do recommend um, having all that information collected in an offline document that you have in place first. Um, so that way, if you're working on it or somebody else in your company is working on it, everybody sort of is on the same page as, as to how, you know, how the address should look. How, you know, um, what, how do we list the company name? Do we want to list our LLC in there? You know, how, exactly. Is there a hyphen or is there a dash? You know, all those kinds of little details that don't seem like they mean a lot, but they can lead to confusion because the customer might think it's two different businesses if it's you know even punctuated slightly differently that sort of thing or phone number if you're using um, if you've changed phone numbers or if you're using tracking phone numbers to track your leads and your call conversion um, all that is you know you want to make sure you've got that all recorded so somebody can see and they don't delete a, a tracking number because they don't realize that's an actual number associated with the business so um, and we've got a, a spreadsheet on our website that you can download um, and I assume we can put a link in the, the show notes here yeah to, to that where you can download that um, you don't even have to put in your email it's just a free download go grab that where you can fill that information in and it's got all the critical pieces of this business information the key of course being that nap the name address phone um, but also a description of your business. So you want it to be um, engaging and interesting. So it used to be five, six years ago, we would write those descriptions very keyword heavy. So kind of like the way we used to do, um, you know, meta tags back in the day, like all about the keywords, not about who cares if anybody's reading it because it's really only search engines. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Google wants these descriptions to be something unique about the business because they have a lot of other ways, which I'll talk about in a minute, about how they figure out like what you're all about. So you can put some keywords in there, but that it's a great opportunity to talk about what makes you unique. So, um, and that's also because somebody, maybe if you're looking at a local pack, they may be looking at two other 
other businesses next to yours. And so that unique description can be a way to push them over. Um, so if you know your ideal client, really making sure that your wording in there is speaking to that ideal client as well. Um, the categories, and I have these bullets switched, but categories are really important. Um, and I'm just, this is something that I've always kind of known, but I've really dived in and learned a lot more about the last couple of years because it's kind of come more on my radar. And I didn't realize how complex this issue with categories is until I started diving more into it. Um, and it's because Google, the way they decide categories, there's not really a lot of logic to it. Like, so there's occasions where we'll be working with companies where I expect there to be a lot of categories that are relevant to what they do. And there's like one, and it's not even really a good fit. And you're like, what? Or there's other other industries where I'm like there's really like seven different categories that could you know apply so part of it is making uh -huh. sure that um, you choose you know because there's no penalty for having a, a, a number of categories on there as long as they're relevant to your business so the only time you get into trouble is you start you know if you're a dentist and you're throwing automotive keywords or medical keywords in there, you're going to, you're going to get dinged for that because you're going outside your field. But for instance, on a dentist profile, you might have dentists, you might have optometrists office, you might have family dentists. They've got a lot of different variations. Um, and there's not a ton of great resources out there for it with the exception of um, looking at um, your competitors and seeing where they're listed. This is one where I do recommend hiring a professional. So even if you kind of manage and do it yourself, this is a great one because they can also use, um, you know, as professional SEO people can use our keyword research knowledge and to really help guide you in the right direction. But that's one that I do recommend working with the professionals on selecting those categories and making sure you've selected all the categories. Google's got a master list of sort of what's available but it's very hard to find that publicly and so that's one where and that's an hour of a professional's time so we're not talking a lot of money spend a little bit of money have somebody guide you on categories is a great way to invest um, products and services so this is one you can absolutely do yourself and that's going to be, um, you want to talk about, you know, what it is you do. Um, I like products a lot more than I like services. And actually, I don't have the menu on here because we don't work a lot with restaurants and hospitality. So I always forget the segment. Mm -hmm. But if you are, um, you can also, for a restaurant, put your menu on there. And I will say, as a consumer who has food sensitivities, restaurants, please put detailed menus out there. I know it's a lot of work, but for me, it's a really big deterrent. And there's more and more people in this category, a really big determining factor as to whether or not I go to a place if I can see in advance if they have something I can actually eat there. Um, so I know, and I've talked to a lot of people in the restaurant industry and they're like, it's just so much work, but it's well worth it. Um, particularly if you are looking to attract new customers. Um, and so menu falls into the same category, but it's very specific to restaurants. Everybody else is gonna be looking at products or services, and you can actually do both depending on your business. Um, why I like products better is that there's some extra features. So on services you can put, you can do categories to group your services together and you can do a short description, but that's pretty much it you can do with the category. The product, you can actually include a link back to that now you have to have the product listed on your website, so you gotta have a page for it. Um, but you can link back to your website, so it's a great way to get people directly more information on that product on your website. The downside is all products have to have a price. So if you're a service business where price really sort of depends on, like for us and marketing consultants, like there's a lot of factors, so it's very challenging for us to just sort of throw a price out there, right? Because depending on your industry and how established you are and where your business is and your goals can really affect the price. And so that may, for like a professional services consultant, they're probably gonna be more on the services end. But if there's any way that, you know, if you're a salon, spa kind of thing, you've got prices on all your massages, right? list those as products and then you can link over to that particular massage um, on your website. And so it's a great way to improve your ranking. And we know um, the massage industry is a great example. Consumers are getting a lot more educated and so they're more familiar with the different styles. So they're not just looking for massage now. Um, the more savvy consumers are looking for specifics. And great example, we were working with a chiropractor slash wellness office and they do kinesiology, which is a pretty niche specialty. And we just added that in as their category on their Google My Business listing and we put it in their description. This was before products and services were was available. And the next time we saw them, she's like, I'm getting calls for kinesiology. And I'm like, that's because nobody else is doing it. And like, not that that's a huge audience, but for the people who know and they're looking for that, you're showing up because it's not competitive. Mm -hmm. And so that's where products and services are really an opportunity to not not only highlight the big sort of 
big name competitive things you do that a lot of other people do. But if there's very niche specialties within there, I would uh, uh, suggest putting that in there because those can be less competitive. So it can be a great opportunity, particularly if it is a differentiated for your business. And do the products and services always show up? Because wasn't there a while there when they rolled this out when it wasn't showing up? Well, so that's the tricky thing about it. And we were just doing some tests on this last week. So one of the big things to note about Google My Business is there's different views on the desktop that you as um, just a consumer, if you're Googling it, it looks very different on Maps, the profile, the way it does in just a Google search. Um, and then it looks very different if I have admin access to it on the back end. I have some access to other features. Products and services only show up in the mobile app. So if you're using it, um, either you have the Google My Business app on your phone as a manager. Um, so if you want to check that they're in there, you can add them through the desktop, through the, through the profile there. But like we were trying to check the other day and like actually view a client's on the front end. For some reason, we'd been locked out of the Google My Business listing. And I'm like, wait, let me pull it up. And we're looking on the back end. And so you will see it there. And we also want to see what it looked like. So we're doing some sure. testing. Um, so the, the phone app is the best place, either through a, a search in Chrome or through the Google Maps app or using the Google My Business app on your phone is the best place to see that information. It's a little hidden because they list it under menu. So it doesn't say products or services either. It says menu, which you're like, well, we're not a restaurant. What is that? And it's on there. So it can be a little tricky to find, but it is there for consumers. But the really where I see the more benefit is an opportunity to include those very specific keywords about what you do. And local SEO, it's really about the service keywords or the product keywords, like the specific things you do. So yes, we're a dentist, but we do, you know, orthodontia, we do Invisalign, we do, you know, do all these different things that consumers are looking for. It's a great way for you to get that visibility for that. Whereas if you try to put all that in your description on Google, there's a good chance you might get your listing suspended because that's not really what they want to see there. They, this, that's where they want this to go. You can think of my Google, your Google My Business profile is basically a mini version of your website, and that's really what Google wants you to do with it. And there's a lot of discussion around, well, that means people aren't going to go to my website. Am I really losing business? Let's face it, for small businesses, there's one metric that matters at the end of the day, and it's, is my phone ringing? Am I getting new business? And you don't care mm -hmm. if it's because they're coming through your website or they're finding you on Google My Business and calling you, right? And so, yes, it does preempt some traffic to your website. And so for us marketing people, it's a challenge because now we're like, well, your website traffic's way down, but you're showing up, number one, in the search position. Well, that's where, and Google My Business has got some great um, stats on the back end, which I don't have a lot in this presentation, and we could probably do a whole separate video on that, but there's some great stats stats on what you can be tracking on the back end of Google My Business. Um, if you are missing those clicks to your website where you can still get data on how much customers you're getting. That end too. Uh, so next, once you get that basic information, and I think I've got, yes, here we go. I've got this broken out. So the basic information is kind of a one-time thing. You will want to revisit that periodically, maybe once a year, just like you want to refresh your website periodically, make sure, you know, the way you talk about your service hasn't changed. You know, these days everything's changing so much. So something that was a hot service five years ago or even a year ago, and now everybody's like, oh, no, we don't need that anymore because there's this whole new tech. So refresh for that sort of thing. So just like you're doing with your website, make sure that's all matches. And ideally, if you've got a service page on your website, I want to see that listed as a service. Um, in your Google My Business profile because even though there's not a link there, I feel like, you know, that's when where Google's looking at both and they're going, yep, yeah, okay, this is legit. Um, so that's a one time, you're one and done, it's great. Maybe a couple hours of your time to do it. So not crazy amount of time. Um, again, if you use our form to fill it out, it helps, it gives you all direction, you get that all in there and dump it in. Um, now, on a more ongoing basis, um, and I say monthly on this because I don't think it's realistic for most small businesses to do this more frequently, um, but as frequently as you can, and even quarterly is sufficient, you want to make sure you have photos and videos in your profile. And this is something, it's a bit of a challenge, and we hadn't put a lot of attention to in the past, and we're actually planning first of the year, we're going to be sending our team out to all of our clients to do photos on site because us asking our clients for photos isn't working because they never send them to us. So we're like, that's it. We're going to go take some um, because Google does not want to see stock photos here. So these need to be photos of the real people in your business. It can be customers. It can be staff, team members, employees, owners, 
It can be photos of your building. So if you have a physical building, um, like we've got an optometrist office that's this beautiful and they've got this huge selection of glasses. So they're going to be an easy one. We're going to go out and snap some photos of their selections of all the frames and of the really pretty waiting area and all those kinds of things. Cause what we want this to do is give um, potential customers, like to let them know what that experience is going to be like when they walk in the door. So you don't even have to have people in the photos, just some great photos of your building, a 360 tour, um, which those, you can find some photographers that do this very affordably is well worth the investment if you have the kind of physical business where somebody comes in, particularly if you've got a really pretty space. We have a client who's a naturopath. They just did one in their office is like, it's the most beautiful office I've ever seen. They've very, set it up very intentionally as you would expect with a naturopath. And so that does a lot of credit to their business having that 360 on the Google My Business profile where people can actually, you know, sort of tour the business before they even go in there. Um, now, if what if you're a service business like home services, so you're going out out to your customers, a plumber, an air conditioner, that's, you know, you don't necessarily, you're not going to show pictures of ducks. I joke, I worked with some air conditioning companies in the <laughs> past, and they're like, here's this great before and after. And I'm like, what am I looking at? They look the same <laughs> to me, right? But pictures of your guys, because um, that's a big one we know in that industry. Um, you've got people in your home and you want to know who they are. And there's a lot of services where, you know, they'll send out emails and stuff. But picture, put pictures of your key team members or your techs in your Google My Business profile. Even if it's a group shot, that's great. Just so that I have a sense of comfort about who's coming in my home. Um, but also, like, pictures of trucks can be really kind of cool. Like, here's what I'm expecting, particularly if you have some nice looking trucks. So it doesn't have to be... Um, you know, you can really kind of think outside of the box, but I would certainly say in home services, like showing pictures of the work that you're doing, probably not the best fit. Now, if you are in a creative field, like what we do, we could certainly show samples if you're building websites and your samples and that sort, you know, of your actual product work is a great use of that as well to highlight what you do. So you really just want it to give people a sense of what it's like to work with your business and the quality of work that you provide with the photos and videos. And that's something, it's kind of a one time you may do it, get some photos in there and get it loaded, but you should, uh, Google, um, it does impact ranking and how visible you are. So you definitely want to be adding to that a little bit over time. So even if it's just kind of snapping photos throughout, you know, the quarter and then once a quarter going in posting it or throughout the month. And that can be, if you do a really cool job, you know, grab a picture of it, you have a new employee coming in take a picture of them, you get a new truck or, you know, you redecorated your office, all kinds of different things you can add in there. Um, now on the other side of photos, that's a little tricky cause you don't have any control over this is, um, um, outside people can also submit photos about the business. Now, ideally this is your customers and they know the business, but with the Google local guides program, which is, um, general public, I'm a local guide can go out and submit information on a business. And it's Google's basically feed on the street to say, tell us about what's around you. Um, they can submit photos as well. And that can be a little tricky because sometimes you get photos from people who aren't really customers and you're like, uh, this isn't a good fit. Now, if it's a flat out, not a good match, like we've got some that are like a picture of a board of the building. We're like, that's not our clients. You can flag and spam those or you can flag those and, and attempt to get them deleted, but you are somewhat at Google's mercy. Um, so this is a case where I feel like the best defense is a good offense. Just always be loading your own photos in there or encourage, you know, that's something you can coach your clients a little bit too about, Hey, like, you know, we'd love for you to post a photo or one of the things that I love right now is the trend of putting murals in buildings because then it's mostly for Instagram. Cause you know, you've got your Instagram shot, but like what a great way to encourage people having, you know, a really fun, and maybe it's not a mural, just a really pretty waiting room or a place where they can, you know, a selfie station essentially in your office where somebody can take a picture and post that onto Google as well, because it's a great, um, you get that sort of user experience and you can also use it on social media. So, um, you can certainly go that that's sort of an extra step, but you can do your photos yourself, but you can always, um, empower your customers, particularly if you're in entertainment, retail, um, hospitality, any of that, that's a place where I would suggest energizing your customers because you're going to get some really great photos there. Um, if you're more on the service professional services side, you might want a little bit more control about what's being shown. So you may, may not go that route. So here's a question. I had yeah. a, um, a person ask me, a business owner, uh, a customer had submitted a photo and it was showing up as their cover photo or their ah. main photo. And yep. they, they tried a ton of things, could not get one of their own photos. This, this customer photo kept being displayed as the kind of the cover main photo. Yep. Is there any way around that? So that is a little bit of a challenge and that's actually something we're working on for a client right now. So I don't have a super solid answer, <laughs> but here's what I will tell you that I know about it. 
Google has said that in your Google My Business profile, and this is something that was really new in I think just the last six months or so, where now you can designate a cover profile image and you can also designate a logo image. And I, it's what's supposed to happen is when you have designated those, they're supposed to show up first. From what I'm reading online, that doesn't always happen. So you're a little bit at Google's mercy, but absolutely go in and do that. Um, now, the other option is if you have a photo that's showing up there that you don't really like and you can discern from the username who that customer was that posted that, I think you can actually message them. Um, reach out and say, hey, listen, would you mind removing that photo? Because it's not quite exactly what we want to show about the business. So, you know, that's when we're having a relationship can help. But yes, absolutely. First, take take uh, use of that feature of designating your feature, your cover image, as well as designating your logo. So I always like to have a logo on there. I know it's not the most engaging, but it's a really important brand element. And my background being in graphic design and branding, like that's really where my heart goes. Like keep your brand in there as well. So same thing with your cover photo. You want to keep your colors consistent and keep the brand really consistent. That's one where I feel like if you take some time to create a nice cover image and load it up in there and designate it, it's probably a lot more likely that Google's going to allow that or it's a really nice photo of your team, something that's quality because that's really what they're looking for is they want to provide that quality experience. They're going to be a lot more likely to allow that through. But sometimes we see it's just sort of glitches with Google system as their which when we talk about Q&A, there's some breaking news on that that I'll talk about. <laughs> um, you know, where they're kind of working out kinks, so some of that's kind of a sit and wait. There is Google support available, although I think they've actually just dropped their phone support, and I think it's all just messaging now. Oh, no. And I don't know with that particular issue how much resolution you're going to get because it's just not, unless it's like a very blatantly, like not your business photo. Like that, we've had ones that were just like really weird, random, like, like a fat guy smoking a cigar that clearly had nothing to do with the business. And we're like, where did this even come from? Like kind of yeah. like random thing on um, that, you know, you're more likely to get, get action on. But if it's like, well, it's just not a flattering photo of the business, do your best, keep loading your own photos in there. Cause that's the other thing is I feel like eventually your own photos are going to overwhelm that one customer photo. I think um, the one thing I don't know, and this is a, a tactic we use with uh, Q and A and reviews and you may be able to do it with photos as well. If you have the ability to go in and sort of thumb up or thumb down them, I would recommend doing that and having your employees do that or having friends and family do that because it's a great way to, um, to um, basically give some prominence to that. So what we've done with that, uh, particularly in review, um, reviews or Q&A where you get a stupid answer, we'll write our own mm -hmm. answer from the business. And then I'll actually go with my personal profile because being a local guide. And if you're a small business owner and you're doing your own Google My Business and you're not already a local guide, Google that and sign up because it's a great, it gives you some extra street cred there mm -hmm. where Google's more likely to take your edits as a consumer. Um, I'll go and thumb that up and then I'll a lot of times push that stupid answer down and have our basically our preferred official answer show up over the top. And so that's one I'll have to dig into that a little bit and see if that ability is available with photos. But if it is definitely um, utilize that as well, because Google's taking user feedback and saying, Hey, this is really helpful to other people. So let's keep that there. And I'm not sure what the specific size and ratios are, but size does have yeah. something to do with it because yeah. I was trying to get a cover photo for my own business to, to be the main photo. And I, it was not showing up. And then I tried a different size of the same image and then it did show up. So there's so something there and I'm not, I'm not sure what that particular size is, but. I've got a, a link for some, for photo specs that walks through all that, that I'll send to you, Michael, sure. that you can put in the show notes. Perfect. Um, for that, because there's some resources, but you're right. And they, and the bottom line is they want high quality. So that's one where I would start big and downsize if it mm -hmm. says, hey, this is too big to upload. So high quality, high res, and definitely not stock photos. Stock photos are going to get pulled if, if you're using anything like that too. Yep, absolutely. Perfect. So yeah, I'll send you those guidelines on photos because I think that would be excellent to include in action. Yeah, that's absolutely. Let me talk quickly about Q and A yeah. and spam, because this is kind of more of your, once you get your one time set up, there's some things that you should be kind of checking monthly or quarterly a little bit more periodically. And then stuff you want to be really monitoring is your reviews and posts. And Q and A I want to talk about because it's a really underutilized element. It's a huge missed opportunity for most businesses. And also there's some funky stuff going on. So if you have been using it, you might be having some frustration right now. So what Q&A is, is now on your profile, and this does show up on both the desktop and the mobile versions, you'll see there will be a, um, if there's, um, 
if they already have Q&A, it'll say see answers about this place or post questions about this place. And it's a link you click on. And when you click on that, you'll see there's a whole list of questions and answers. Sometimes there might only be one, but there may be multiple for a lot of businesses where people ask questions about your business. And this goes back to what I was talking about where they really want to keep you, you know, provide as much information as that Google My Business profile as possible. So if you've got FAQs on your website, those should absolutely be loaded into Google My Business as a QA. and a um, And it's, you know, typical kind of things like, hey, do you have next day service? Uh, do you do same day appointments? Oh, how far do you serve? Um, what, you know, what are your hours? Now, you don't want to put holiday hours in there because you can actually set that in your profile and that kind of goes into that monthly if you have like an I know that this video will be year round, but right now we happen to be going into the holiday season. So that's one of the conversations we're talking with all of our clients. What are your, what are your hours for Thanksgiving? What are your hours for Christmas and New Year's? And we're loading that into Google My Business. Like a great example is I showed up at a coffee shop last year who didn't update their Google My Business hours on New Year's Day. And I was super excited to get a hot coffee and they were closed and I was very disappointed. And so that's one where, you know, you want to make sure for that customer experience, you've got that loaded in there. Um, but if you've got like stock hours, like we're normally, cause you'd be surprised how many people don't actually look at the hours. So you could put that in there. What are your hours mm -hmm. or are, are you open later? That kind of thing. So FAQs are great to load in there and you don't have to wait for customers to post questions. You can post your own questions and you can post your own answers. So that's one where we definitely recommend being proactive and just add a couple new questions every month. Now that said right now, there's, and we're not clear if it's a glitch or if it's intentional or exactly what's going on, but Q&A has been disappearing and reappearing and some showing up and some not. So right now it's a little bit in flux and all we really know is it's in flux. We don't really know what's going on with that. So if you haven't invested a lot of time in Q&A and you're watching this in November of 2019, maybe hold tight till first of the year. However, if it's after that, just do a little Google search and check to see if that issue has been resolved and if so, jump in on that and spam I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that because that's a much more advanced technique that's one particularly if you're in a high spam industry so legal and home services plumbing air conditioning locksmiths I highly recommend hiring a professional to do that because it's very time-consuming that's also one we put if you notice on my priority list we put at the bottom of the list because it, it's a huge time suck so you want to do all this other stuff first and then attack spam but that's one where I would definitely work with a professional on figuring out because there's some technical things that happen there but just be aware there is a lot of either review spam or a lot of spammy entries out there and if you're not getting the visibility you want with your profile and you've done all these other things it's probably time to look at that so weekly and daily reviews and posts so reviews are the new version of testimonials customers can talk about their experience with your business why well, this is so important to monitor is a lot of customers if they have a bad experience they post there and not because they're trying to be malicious with their business what I find is most of the times a customer really wants um, to make the business aware they're trying to help you make you better or they want some resolution and th that to them is their most comfortable way because you know conflicts not comfortable for anybody right to reach out and tell you that so first of all like what I say with negative reviews is like you just got to take a step back and really try to look at the situation objectively if you're one of those business owners because your business is your baby and you can't do that mm -hmm. hire somebody to manage your reviews for you that's we have one client that that's all we do she is an awesome baker she's a little hot-headed so she sends us the situation and we write the responses because we can kind of take out and there's been times where I've gone back to her and said well from what I'm seeing you're kind of in the wrong here so it's not like we're gonna post and like this person's just kind of being a complainer like I think we need to basically post and offer them a refund so we'll actually coach um, our businesses on that but that's something you know look at it through that lens and, and be willing to be honest with yourself because we all mess up. Like that's just one of those things that happens. Um, and just really recognize that when it happens. Um, the other side of reviews though, and this is the positive side is you're not going to get reviews if you don't ask for them. And, uh, reviews have a huge impact on your visibility. And so if you do not already have some kind of review campaign in place where you're regularly asking your customers to give you feedback, you absolutely need to do that. And that's like a whole separate video you could do <laughs> on that. So that's, I'm going to leave it at that. There's lots of really easy ways to do that, but absolutely be soliciting reviews um, to, for your profile. Cause if visibility is your game and having people find you on Google reviews are, if, if you've done everything else and you're still not getting it, it's because it's the reviews are, they're a huge mess. And it's something, it's a bit of a start push pull we have with a lot of our clients um, cause it, and it didn't matter as much in the past. So we kind of let them ignore it, but now we're getting really aggressive with them and, and forcing that because it is really important. 
And then posts are a great opportunity. So they're very similar to like posts on Facebook. The good news is you don't have to do them nearly as frequently. So a post will last for seven days, unless it's an event post in which then if it's an event you're running for the whole month, it can run for the whole um, time of the event or if it's an event that's like a month out it'll actually stay up until the event goes live um, but that's a great way to, so if you do events at your business or you're doing um, you have special offers we love posts for that and those kind of posts perform super well because it's a great way to pull new customers in so particularly if you have a new customer new client offer having a Google my business post that just says hey all new customers get 20% off click here for more details like a huge conversion factor um, and if you don't have some kind of a new customer offer I would highly recommend that or even like a free consult something to grab people's attention or uh, if you've got online booking it's a great way to have a post that says promote your booking so the nice thing with Google my business post is they don't have to be like your social media post where you're constantly feeding new content for a lot of businesses what you can do is you can identify like a handful so anywhere between four and seven kind of key posts whether it's a special offer whether maybe it's an event you do periodically or whether it's even um, in, in maybe special offers you do each month or it may be the same offer you kind of rotate around and you can just basically um, sort of like we'll do where we'll do four and so we'll rotate them every four weeks so it's something a little different but it's the same four going through the queue and if you're using a scheduling tool you can set that up at the beginning of the year and it's kind of a one and done but we do recommend that if you do have throughout the year news happening at your business you've got an event or something special you're doing then sort of preempt that schedule and put a new post in there um, if you don't have a lot of special offers or events, which for like service-based businesses like uh, professional services, um, CPAs and, and uh, mortgage people and all those kind of folks, you may not have that kind of fun jazz that our consumer type businesses have. Um, it can be a great place to highlight your blog content. You're not going to get a ton of click through, but it's a way to show your expertise. So when somebody's looking at your profile and comparing you to a competitor and you've got a great article talking about, you know, five things to get your home ready to sell, for instance, if you're a realtor versus they have no post um, it could certainly lead to that conversion so lots of opportunities there special events and offers are always your best go-to but if that's not available just highlighting blog content or highlighting products or services or people in the business are great secondaries a great way to again show the face to the company and, and just show a little bit more detail about you now you mentioned schedulers are most social media schedulers now integrating with Google my business or? No, <laughs> that's a hard one. And I know that because we just recently switched schedulers and that was part of what I was looking at because we were using three different tools. Like this one's for Google My Business and this one we'll do Instagram and Pinterest and this one we'll do everything mm -hmm. else. And so I finally found one. It's a kind of a funny name. It's called One Up, and it's oneup.app is the URL. And it does do, it will schedule to all the platforms. So Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google My Business. So we liked it because it's an all in one kind of place and their pricing wasn't crazy because that's the other thing is um, the ones that do do it like some of the more well-known ones like buffer they don't do Google my business and so that so that's a great one and there are some very specific there are some specific Google my business only tools out there that will do posts but they also will actually help you automate Q&A so if you're doing a lot with Google my business or you have multiple locations and it's just too much to manage you might look at a tool specifically for Google my business because it'll allow you to do things like Q&A and photo and schedule all that as well as your posts and so there's a couple of tools out there and that actually helps with ranking as well but if not the one up apps a great one um, but you can also schedule directly in the profile and if you're doing that thing where you're doing you know every sort of four weeks and because they'll send you a reminder and be like hey your post is about to expire if you've got like a marketing person on your staff that that's kind of their job they just get that notice and if you've already got the post already written out it's just kind of a copy and paste so it can be fairly easy to do if you're doing it manually too. perfect and I think, oh, okay, and so this one, we can definitely include this slide as a PDF or put these links in there. These are some of basically the my go-to sources for learning all about this. Um, and so just some resources to know a little bit more. This ultimate how-to guide from White Spark, this thing is a long post. They've got an index in there so you can jump around. But this one is, um, whoops, goes in so much more detail than what I've talked about. Um, I would highly recommend that. Um, and then Moz's article talks about that, and it goes into that image of what you can control and what you can't 
Um, so that's kind of helpful because you do have users are able to change a lot of stuff on your profile. And so I just read an article where they're or a thread on a forum where they're talking about like, why does my Google business post keep or my profile keep changing? Well, it's because Google can make changes to it as well as outside people. And so that's where we do recommend. And that's why we get into this kind of monthly maintenance, at least check your profile once a month to make sure that all your carefully crafted information is still showing in there. Um, and there is, oh good, I've got a resource in here. I forgot about this for helping to choose your right category as well. Um, and then a couple of new features uh, features that just came out in the summer. And I think I talked about this, so where you can now set your preferred covered image and display logos, and that would be covered in that bright local article there at the end. Um, and then, like I said, with the posts, we talked a little bit about that. Short name, so that's a new um, feature where now you can basically, like just like on Facebook where you can have the at and basically have a tag to tag your business, you can do that with Google. Um, and those are actually just in the last week or two now showing on the front end of the profile. You do want to be a little bit careful with that because you can actually put keywords and stuff in there. So you can do some like little SEO tricks with that. Um, but what we saw initially is it is setting the short name sometimes would cause the listing to get suspended. And when I talk about that, what that means is Google basically for some reason has an issue with your uh, profile and has suspended it. And there's a couple of different suspensions. A hard suspension means you just like worked Google's last nerve and you're out. And you really don't want to get to that point if you're a legit local business because it's very hard to come back from that. The soft suspension means they saw something on there. It was a little fishy, so they're kind of slapping their hands saying, don't do that again. Um, so that's one where um, the short names initially, I haven't seen that as much, so I think it's safe to do that again now. But I would say just be really careful with that. And I always lean, so I did an article years ago about this, about you know branding versus SEO. And I always lead on the side of brand over SEO. Um, like, so if you're trying to decide between do we go keyword and key phrase and, you know, optimization heavy, or do we really about our brand focus on your brand? Cause at the end of the day, we buy from other people. We buy from unique companies. We want a unique experiences and brand delivers that SEO doesn't. So people will find you regardless, but, um, you know, so that may be where it's your short name. You just want to do your company name. So it's, you know, to, to, to emphasize your brand and not so much SEO. Um, if the short name's already taken, I assume you can't take it. Right. And and can you change your short name more than once? You can, you can change it throughout the year. So that's something, yeah. and that's where the SEO kind of, some of the, you know, the, the people in our industry, they see this, oh, here's an opportunity. <laughs> I'm gonna change, you know, I'm gonna have a heating one in the winter time, and I'm gonna have a cooling yeah. one in the summertime. So you can change it throughout the year, but that, just be aware that those that's one of those items that can trigger a suspension. So sure. if your strategy is to change that on a regular basis, just know that that might, and when it's suspended, it's not visible. And so that could potentially impact your business. We had a client, um, not this exact scenario, but a couple months back who just started working with us and they're a dumpster rental company and they have a very large service area and we still don't know how this happened. I think it's because they had a map on their website showing like a custom Google map showing their service area. Well, that had gotten applied to their Google My Business profile and we get this panicked email from the business owner like, our calls have dropped off significantly. And I'm like, that's odd. We just optimized your profile last week. What's going on? And I went and looked mm -hmm. at it and I'm like, but we definitely did not set the service area. And that's a whole separate conversation. It's really <laughs> the services that it's affected by that. But the, somebody had set the service area and we removed it and it popped back up again and it was showing up. So that's one where, you know, you just want to be careful with some of those little things. And so, so same thing with this. And that's exactly what happens as soon as you show the visibility. If your Google My Business profile is working for you, you will feel that right away in terms of call volume. Great. Do you have any questions? Fire away. If well, tell me about being a local guide. Ah, yes. Okay. So local guides are actually kind of fun. I wish I had a little bit more time to dedicate it to it, but I feel like sometimes mm -hmm. my business owns my life. I know you, well, and you've got a new baby. So between new baby and business, <laughs> like you don't have a lot of, but local guides, particularly if you are um, somebody who really likes, um, frequenting local businesses and want to share your experience with other people. It's a great program. So whether or not you're a business owner, it's a great program, a great way to share what's happening. And so what Google has done with this program is they said, you know, we've got businesses all across the U S and all across the world. And obviously we can't be there getting details about all these businesses. So we need 
you, the general public, to help us with this and help us identify those really those rock star businesses, right? So this is a great argument for brand and why you should be doing something unique and creating a unique customer experience in your business because this is the kind of stuff people talk about and a Google, uh, a Google guide might post about and then, you know, all of a sudden you went from like a trickle of business to like a flood of business because of this one unique thing you do. So the Google guides program, it's free to sign up for. You get points for writing reviews, for posting photos, for checking in at businesses, for all these different things. If you amass enough points, you get all kinds of special little Google perks. I've never quite gotten to that point myself, but at the very least, it's a fantastic tool for um, just sharing your experiences and, and helping other people discover some of these really cool local businesses. So if that's something that's passionate, that you're passionate about, whether or not you're a business owner, whether or not you care about getting found, I highly recommend doing that. And if you use the Google um, Maps app on your phone, like once you sign up, it'll pop up and say, hey, you were just at this, do you wanna write a review? Or you were just doing this, do you wanna post a photo? So it'll nudge you for it, so it's really easy to do. It really doesn't take much time. Um, and you can answer, answer questions and answers. So if you've been to a business, so then we don't get stupid answers, we get good answers, right? Um, a lot of the stupid answers are because we have well-meaning local guides who answer questions because they just want the points and they don't really know the business. So that's why as the business will step in. But if you've been to a business, it's a great opportunity to answer questions about it. So share that information. For a business owner, it's a great way to build up your profile, your credibility with Google. So like I have like instances where I'll have clients, like I had a client who moved and we were supposed to be updating their Google My Business profile. They went rogue and updated their address on their own. And then they're like, well, it's updated. And I'm like, yeah, but no, it's not because it's sending you a verification postcard. Did you get that? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, so you see it on the back end, the new address. The old address is still on the front end, guys. So I went in just as a, an individual and updated. And in fact, I think it's because they hadn't given us access to it yet. And I was like, yeah. what are you doing? You're killing me here. Went in and did it just from the front end and accepted my change within a couple hours. But that's because I've been making edits to Google Maps listings for years and years and years. So I built up that credibility. But that's something as you contribute more, Google says, hey, this is somebody who's trusted. And they do have, I think like a trusted advisors group. I think it's mostly local SEO and marketing professionals. But I think if you are active enough as a guide where you can actually then get invited to Google events to give feedback and all that kind of stuff. So if that's really, you know, if that's your goal, it's a great way to do that. At the very least, it's a great way to show your local, you know, your neighbors, your friends and family, great places to go and discover more about the businesses. For a business owner, it's an excellent way to, um, particularly if you're having trouble getting your changes to stick, to, you know, be able to stick that or, and if you're a marketing company, it's a great opportunity to be able to help your clients in a way where your backend changes may not have the same impact as your local guide changes. Yeah, exactly. And I've had that same uh, incident yeah. where I'm a local guide myself. And if a client hasn't granted me access yet, uh, in the meantime, I can suggest that change and yep. I've gotten those accepted because I'm a local guide. Yep. Um, and, and I have gotten a free pair of socks for having ah, so many points. So I've gotten one perk so far. I've gotten, I, I got more perks on the Google agency side. I have a really cool, like a little Google branded thumb drive and stuff. Yeah. And Google gives out swag all the time, uh -huh. but yeah, I mean, so it's fun to have the stuff, but particularly for marketing professionals, but I would say even business owners, cause there's just times where you're trying to do something on your listing. And one of the things we kind of joke about internally is like, we'd love to be able to tell our clients like, Hey, if we own the internet, like this would be done already <laughs> because we really don't. And you are kind of at the mercy and it's just one, another one of those tools you can have in your toolbox yeah. if you're not able to get resolution one way, you can maybe get resolution another way. Great. Well, before we wrap up, why don't you tell our audience where they can find you and if there's anything you want to promote? Sure. Awesome. Thank you. So um, I've got a lot more great information about local SEO and uh, Google My Business. In fact, I'm going to be putting this video onto a post I have. So maybe you're watching it there. But if not, you can go to our website. It's 910West, the number 910, and then West, just like the direction, .com. So you're welcome to go over there and check out lots of free resources and learn a little bit more about the company. I will be, I'm planning to launch in early 2020, we're working out the details over the holiday, a Google My Business Challenge. And the idea with this is it'll be a four week, month long kind of thing where we'll actually have little mini courses that will walk you through all the things I've talked about today. So if that's something of interest 
for you, jump on over to our website. Um, and when I've got it live, we can add it, the link in the show notes, but sign up for that. And all it is is put your email in and it'll walk you through it. I'm going to build it so it's evergreen. So you can either join us when we do it for the month. We're going to have a prize for the winner, or you can join at any time and just get that free information. Um, I'm a big believer in empowering businesses to be able to handle their own. Um, because sometimes for a lot of small businesses, it's just the resources aren't there to outsource. And so, you know, however we can put that power in their hands, but also, you know, if you do need some help, obviously something like categories or something like that, we'd be happy to jump in, but join our challenge or visit my website and read my blog or find us on social media. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Facebook's the best place to find us. Cause I, I run a little business, um, a business education group for our local chamber there where anybody can join us and post questions and get help. And we've got lots of great resources in there too. Well, thanks so much. And one of the reasons I for sure wanted you on is because of your deep expertise in Google My Business. So thanks so much for sharing that with us. I'll make sure to include all of these uh, links and uh, things you mentioned in the description. And when uh, you launch that challenge, I'll make sure to get that uh, in the description as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me. It was a real pleasure, Michael. I hope you enjoyed this conversation and deep dive look into Google My Business. My biggest takeaway from Jasmine is the fact that she pointed out that your Google My Business listing might look very different on a desktop versus mobile device. So if you're making edits in your Google My Business account and you're checking, for example, your live listing on desktop, and maybe you're not seeing everything, Go over to your mobile device. It could look very different and you'll probably see your edits live there. So keep that in mind. Now, Jasmine pointed out a ton of great information. If you want to learn more about her, you can go to 910west.com. I'll have links to her social media accounts in the description below. And if you like this video and you want to see more like it, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. Do so below. And when you see that bell pop up, Click that too and you'll get notified every time I post a new video. We'll see you in the next one.